one ringy dingy, two ringy dingies. Hello, your eminence. Hello, your influence. What do you want to talk about? Well, obviously, there's nothing really much to talk about other than the shooting of the gays in Orlando. And I've just popped a question into the chat room, um, and I'll put in a little clip afterwards about who do they think uh, is more accepting of gay men, um, Clinton or Trump? Over to you. Well, my guess would be Trump. What do you, what's your thoughts spontaneously? I think, well, I think you're absolutely right. And uh, uh, one of the reasons, for example, no, it's not a reason. Uh, Donald Trump has been in the hotel business and casino business for uh, many years, right? Yep, that's true. And uh, the hotel business is a very uh, long-term employer of gays, lesbians, gays, bisexual, and transgender, because the hotels don't care. I yeah. mean, as long as the guests are made comfortable, uh, as far as the hotel industry is concerned, the sexual orientation of their uh, staff is irrelevant, but that's not the case when your sister and Hillary Clinton uh, founded DOJ Pride in 1994, because that is a hierarchy of sexual uh, entitlement. And uh, guess what is at the top of that hierarchy field? Over to you. Okay, let me think about this. Uh, hierarchy of sexual entitlement. Huh, what's at the top of the hierarchy? Well, I don't know. Uh, the President of the United States? That's a guess. No, well, my guess is radical feminists. Let me guess again. Can I guess again? <laughs> yes, you may. Would it be radical feminist? Uh, gosh, you're good, Field. I know. That's why you pay me the big bucks, but go ahead. Right. Well, if you look at that, is that amazing image of the DOJ pride um, hierarchy and who they represent, and from memory, it's not in front of me at the moment, although it was in the post today, uh, the Department of Justice pride represents lesbians, gays, bisexual, and transgender in all various branches of the Department of Justice, especially the ATF. FBI, USMS, BOP, etc., etc. Could you just uh, give the expansion of those acronyms? Because you're an American, you know all about this. Yeah, except for I wasn't listening because I'm also an individual who knows better than listen to you. So, uh, BOP is Bureau of Prison, USMS is United States Marshal Service, which other agencies, all of which have senior executive service perverts at the helm. But who else did you mention? ATF. Uh, that's actually alcohol, tobacco, firearms, and explosives. <clears throat> and FBI. Uh, well, it depends on who you're talking about. I believe it's Fields Boeing investigation. Other people that still believe in uh, the Easter Bunny and fairy tales think it's the Federal Bureau of Investigation. They don't ex investigate jack shit. Uh, they did, however, stop one of my ex-spouses on U.S. Highway 10 and ask her if I was a subversive. David, in our discussions of arbitrage, leverage, Boston individuals, and Romney's mantle pants, did you ever explain to me the definition of subversive? I think so, Phil, but maybe you could relay it back because your memory is very acute. <clears throat> no, I'm asking you. I don't remember what a subversive is, but I've been accused of being one by the FBI. So could you help me understand what it is they're accusing me of being guilty of? Well, I think you subvert almost all the established intelligence, uh, members of the intelligence community, because uh, you have a more accurate insight into the principles because you are the brother of your sister. And for many years, uh, we have described her as Mrs. Big, and she's never responded. She's never sued us for libel. And I think she's terrified over you. Well, she ought to be terrified. Uh, but what if, what if uh, Donald Trump, and let's assume for a minute that he's, uh, just the same thing as Hillary, but it's sort of like m and Some are yellow, some are blue, some are red, some have nuts, some don't. But if Hillary and Donald Trump are just like M&Ms, uh, then that, that's okay. <clears throat> but what if my sister thought that uh, Donald Trump and General Joseph Dunford were listening to me when I told them, uh, if anybody wants to find the letter, just Google <clears throat> July 29th plus Dunford plus McConnell plus Trump, and up comes the message I wrote actually on the 28th of July of 2015. But the reason I put the 29th of July on it is because that's my sister's birthday, and I wanted to give her a birthday gift 
uh, befitting of a radical hybristophiliac lesbian traitor. And I want to say for the record, I'm not homophobic and I have nothing against radical hybristophiliac lesbians, but I have a great deal against traitors. And if that makes me a subversive, then kiss my rosy red rectum, I'm a subversive. Over to you, David. Well, infinitely more subversive than you is your sister because she's got inside the pants, if that's not a mixed metaphor, of the Department of Justice. Now, who were you communicating with way back? Um, was it a guy called Day in the Pride organization? Didn't you send him an email and we got back some crap about not knowing at this address? Yeah, and I, for, I can picture him. He's a, well, he's a mouse among males. Notice I didn't say anything about a man. Uh, I've Chris Hook, wasn't that his name? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Well, he's not the only one. I've got a whole raft of them. All I have to do is go to email and put in Chris Hook. And why don't I do that after the show? Because after the show, I don't have anything other than about uh, three days' worth of work to get done in a half a day. And, David, did I tell you that I suffered a grievous injury yesterday? To what part of your anatomy? Well, it's an extremity. It's... Uh, slender, it's pointy, and it's uh, purple. Well, now wait a minute. Is it, is, is it your nose? No, it's not. It's my big toe on my right foot. Are you sympathetic? You're going to laugh at my injury. Well, I have a hangnail down there, so I don't see I should be sympathetic. Well, I think you're rather callous, but then, of course, you're British, so that would be redundant. I'm showing everybody right now the difference between my left index toe and my right index toe. Take a look at my right foot. It's swollen. My right ankle, it's almost as big as Hillary's. Uh, and you want to know what caused this life-threatening uh, injury to me yesterday, David? Yes. I was trying to help uh, Agent Dice plant some trees. Apple trees, if you must know, Rubinette, R-U-B-I-N-E-T-T-E. -E. Anybody in the chat room want to look for Rubinette apples, maybe at the Gurney and Company seed catalog, G-U-N-G-U-R-N-E-Y. Rubinette is R-U-B-I-N-E-T-T-E. -E. If you've never heard of Rubinette apples, don't feel like the Lone Ranger. I had neither until about two weeks ago, and now I've got 10 of them, eight in my yard and two going over to uh, the, the Dangerette's Hen House, which is called the uh, About Time Country something. Uh, but anyway, the place where the Dangerettes and also the Sabau family uh, are staying during the plunge in about a month from now, uh, they're going to have two of these Rubinette trees. But I, I went in the house to get some string because when you plant apple trees, you should always dangle a bar of soap from each new tree or a part of a bar of soap because rabbits and uh, deer love young apple trees. Um, now you don't have to worry about rabbits at this time of the year because there's abundant food for them in the yard but you have to worry about deer and deer don't like soap. In fact if I challenge the chat room has anybody ever seen a deer in the bathtub or a shower? I rest my case they do not like soap. They're homosopic. Uh, but anyway, that's a very good field. I think I'll borrow that. Well, go ahead. Uh, you ripped off most of the rest of my intellectual uh, products over the last. Let's not call it intellectual. Well, what would you call it? Oh, he who likes to criticize. Well, uh, something that is generated by your cerebrations, but I wouldn't call it intellectual. Oh, okay. Well, you can be inaccurate if you must, uh, and certainly. Wait a minute, David. Do you have any idea what day today is? Monday, the thirteenth of June. Monday the 13th of June. Uh, what date? Well, it's Monday the 13th of June. No, I said what day it is. And, of course, you know it's Monday and you know it's 13th of June. But it's also the day that I got book two, uh, Foul BVR, done. It's completed. It was just under 300 pages. I got it done in less than a month. And it'll be printed and in this office. Let me just, for those of you on Langstream, just so you don't think that I'm in a make-believe office, there, there's a 19, excuse me, 1885 Mercedes up there. There's a bank safe. It says City State Bank, but you can't see the plum. If I were to take the, the bathroom, wait a minute, what time is it? Somebody needs to remind me when it's close to prayer time. Anyway, here's the last, something just fell over. Fortunately, it was empty. It was this empty Guinness beer right here. Uh, so don't be alarmed. It wasn't somebody shooting me in the back. 
Uh, although if they were going to shoot me, they're too cowardly to shoot me in the front. Uh, there's one of the dangerettes target practice. There's a house in Annapolis. Here's a big sign for able danger belt buckles. There's a little sign for able danger belt buckles. There's a till hook. There's my afro. I wear my afro whenever I go anywhere near Washington, D.C., so everybody will think I'm a member of uh, this administration, which I'm not. Um, and the only thing I have to add to that, David, oh, there's a whole bunch of able danger t-shirts over here. Hopefully they'll all be gone at the end of the plunge. Uh, I forgot where I was going with this, but I'm sure it's really uh, important. However, it's also important that we stay on schedule with prayer time in six minutes. So I'll turn it over to you. And uh, in six minutes, I'll interrupt. Okay, Phil, thank you. And remember that uh, I taught you about uh, polarize and personalize. And in fact, there's no reason why we shouldn't be much better as community organizers than Hillary Clinton, uh, whose mentor was Saul Alinsky, and uh, Saul Alinsky died before he could mentor Obama, so I suppose Obama was probably mentored by Hillary Clinton. But let's uh, just look at the possibility that Abel Danger could demonstrate, I think quite convincingly, that the best champion in the upcoming presidential election race for the LGBT community is by far and away Donald Trump. And let me just read from uh, this article. But it is his views on gay rights and gay people that most distinguish Mr. Trump from previous Republican standard bearers. He has nurtured long friendships with gay people, employed gay workers in prominent positions, and moved with ease in industries where gays have long exerted influence like entertainment. And there are many gays who are, are very entertaining. I've known a few. He will be the most gay-friendly Republican nominee for president ever said George T. Angelo, the president of the Log Cabin Republicans, a group that supports gay rights. Are you aware of Log Cabin Republicans, and why don't we write to them and trump the benefits of a, a Trump presidency? Well, not, not only am I aware of it, but if I told you that I once uh, wrote in probably five years ago that I once wrote, uh, in fact, I'm going to Google it because nobody else ever wants to Google anything for me. I think Afterburner has... Um, retired. I think Doug McNichol must be down getting some limes to squeeze. Uh, Duke McTurk is busy at college. Let's see who else might not be able to. Okay, va uh, Vanishing Point's not even here today. He's probably in Spain. But a long time ago, I published uh, that we had a dangerette whose pastel color was pastel tangelo. Now, go ahead and tell me Gregory's middle initial and his last name again, David. Who? Well, you just said it. I mean, if, if if you didn't remember what you said, how are we supposed to believe you? You just uh, talked about a Gregory. Okay, let me just have a look. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Well, okay. what's uh, his Gregory name? T. Angelo, the president of the Log Cabin Republicans. Right. Okay, if you take his T and his Angelo and put it together, what do you get? Tangelo. Okay, now do you think that I've ever had a dangerette whose uh, pastel prove-up code is Tangelo? Well, I think I have to confess I don't, but I'm sure you did. Well, you're absolutely right. You confess often that you don't know, and you're always 100% accurate on that. And secondly, <clears throat> um, and I'll put this, I see that uh, Griff Eagle is looking for the group, so I'll put it back in. But uh, I guarantee you that I've written about a dangerette. <clears throat> and, of course, when it says dangerette, it doesn't say male or female dangerette. So maybe we already have. Uh, an outreach to the log cabin Republicans and the log cabin Republicans are the uh, Republican servants that have the nerve and the uh, healthy self-esteem enough to admit that they're of a gay or lesbian lifestyle as opposed to the people who cower in the closet over to you while I put up the Google search. Well, uh, they're cowering in the closet of DOJ pride, which is infected with the stink of Hillary Clinton and your sister's private parts, but I don't want to be personal when it's prayer time. Is it almost prayer time? No, we got a couple minutes. Go ahead. All right. So um, his history with the gay community is a long one. He donated to charities focused on the AIDS crisis in the late 1980s and early 90s. In 2000, when he briefly considered running for president, he gave an interview to The Advocate, a gay magazine, in which he supported amending the 1964 Civil Rights Act to include a ban on discrimination based on sexual orientation, this man should be a hero to the gay community. And this bitch, Hillary Clinton, 
she wormed her way in, if that's the right metaphor, with your sister into DOJ Pride, and she's been creating or setting up uh, man in the middle attacks, or whatever you'd like to call it. It's not man, it's feminista in the middle attacks, and maybe we can attend to that after prayer time. Yes, and I just uh, put in Pastel Tangelo plus, plus Chips plus IOC plus Hamish, and what came up came up from October of 2012, uh, August of 2012, October of 2012. Uh, let me see the other one. I don't see a date. August of 2014. And uh, I will uh, put this search in, but we have a long history going back uh, four years at least to reaching out to this gentleman, Gregory T. Angelo. And why else would I have a dangerette with a pastel prove-up cover? color of uh, Pastel Tangelo, David. I give you that question while I get ready to interrupt you for the prayer. Go ahead. Okay, so we really have uh, in the scales of justice, if that is an appropriate, we have a limited uh, spiritual creature called Hillary Clinton, who's infected the Department of Justice with this militant or radical feminista philosophy which actually sees the gays, I think the male gays, gays as one of the principal enemies because these kind of communities, they don't have a monolithic political attitude. Every one of them is individual. And my guess is across the spectrum, you have uh, right-wing gays and left-wing gays. And I don't care Hey, David, you're breaking up, so it's prayer time anyway. <clears throat> so why don't you... From there on, no, David, well David, they David, they David, fire hose. By fire the hose, David. Fire so hose. We have here to alert. Well, he wouldn't do the fire hose, so I got rid of him. Okay, prayer time. We do this at 22 minutes uh, past uh, the hour every time we're on, and we do this in honor of the people that have been killed by their own governments. Uh, the ones that we care about most are the ones that everyone else would forget, and you will see that at the end of this scripture. Uh, I'll tell you what the scripture is. I, this will allow a lot of people to try to figure out what it is while I read it. Whoever acknowledges me before men, I will acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Here's the quote, footstopper. A man's enemies will be members of his own household. Anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And anyone who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives the one who sent me. Anyone who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and anyone who receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And if anyone gives a cup even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he is my disciple. I tell you the truth, he will certainly not lose his reward. Now let's take 90 seconds uh, for Colonel James Sabow, for the Mogadishu uh, Army people, for Pat Tillman, for the extortion 17, uh, 38 men and a dog, and for everyone else who's ever died at the hands of their own government in chapter, well, in both books, uh, Foul, BBR, and Gadget Vent, you know that we have a real uh, burden to bring justice to Arrower 1285, which now we believe had 268 uh, military people, as well as eight crew members. So they had approximately 276 people that perished on the 12th of December of 1985 when the number three engine shelled itself as a nuclear, tactical nuclear device was cooking in the cargo bay of the DC-8. Off the top of my head, it was November 950 Juliet Whiskey. 90 seconds, please, for all these dead people who have been accepted by their savior.
There's 90 seconds, so I'm going to dial David. And while I'm dialing David, um, you can hear it dial now. There he is. I'm going to read to you uh, three things from a book called Jesus Calling. Hey, David, I'll get to you in just a minute. I'm going to read three things from June 13th in a book called Jesus Calling. Here goes. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. I guide you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hampered. When you run, you will not stumble. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. And I think that's a good thing to remember uh, as we think about the millions of innocents that have perished, uh, some of them awful deaths at the hands of elements of their own government. With that in mind, David, I kicked you off because it was prayer time and you were not responding to the fire hose because you couldn't hear me because your Skype was fragile. So let's see how your Skype is now. Over to you, David. Okay, one, two, three, four, Hyperstophiliac Department of Justice. How does that sound? It sounded like you said six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mitt Romney's mantle pants. Yeah, well, that's all right. That's subject to distortion through you, but that's all you're capable of. Okay, well, now that you've uh, emptied your biggest barrel on me, stand by to get a broadside salvo. Okay, paragraph one, today's post. Abel Danger claims that Hillary Clinton launched DOJ Pride in 1994 with Field McConnell's sister, Christine Marcy, as a base for radical, radical feminists to launch man-in-the-middle attacks on leaders of the ATF, BOP, DEA, FBI, USMS, OJP, and give the feminists the technology and to track and kill their enemies. Now, just to, let's just pick up one of those, the US, USMS, that's the United States Marshal Service, and we're talking 1994. Who was the senior counsel for the United States Marshal Service back in 1994, Field? Over to you. Well, I don't know uh, the title, but my sister was in charge. Is, is she the one that you're trying to finger? Correct. Good. Well, finger her away. Okay, so now in 1994, this bitch of a sister of yours did something really dangerous from the point of view of the existential survival of the Republic of the United States as we know it today. And that is, she launched um, the uh, United States Department of Justice prisoner and alien transportation system, which gave her an alibi to move some of the most dangerous men and women in the world in and out of the United States, away to rendition centers, perhaps Diego Garcia, where they could torture heteros. Um, let's say, as an example, how about Khalid Sheikh Mohammed? As far as I know, he was straight, wasn't he, Field? Over to you. Well, I don't know. I never heard of anybody bending over the soap in Guantanamo and wishing they hadn't. Right. Well, the this guy was accused, and after being waterboarded 183 times by Hillary Clinton and your sister's goons, he's confessed to everything. I suppose what I can ask you is, Field, where the hell is he? Where the where, where is KSM? Yeah, it's probably back where he came from, or he might be down in one of the Carolinas. You know, he went to a college in North Carolina, didn't you? Yeah, I think he studied uh, thermodynamics, a bit like the stuff I studied, and eventually graduated into being an expert on hot air, waste, and chaos, and assembling improvised explosive devices. But he was always, it would appear, an agent run by the Department of Justice Pride Organization. Oops, can I uh, just uh, see who that is, Field? Over to you. Okay, but if it's Silas, I'm going to be upset. Okay, now that he's gone, we can talk about something serious. Uh, anybody in the chat room know what's planned for Father's Day in Fenwick Park? Excuse me, I said Fenwick. Uh, I knew a guy named Lindsay Fenwick from New Zealand, but what I meant to say was Fenway Park. Uh, there's something explosive. Oops, I slept. There's something impressive uh, that's on the Quantico planning schedule for uh, Fenway Park for Father's Day. Now, let's see if anybody in the chat room is worthy of being agent or danger at of the day. Is there a single person in the chat room who, without searching Google, K 
can tell the rest of us where I was on Father's Day of 2010 and what I might have been consuming in moderation. Aha, I didn't think so. Okay, now since none of you know it, feel free to Google, and the uh, whoever gets the Google answer of where I was on Father's Day of 2010, I will be dazzled at your Googling skills, unless you're Duke McTurk, Afterburner, uh, Declan Kiwi. Who else is really fast? Oh, Ginger Cookies. Oh, no, Jameskin. There it is. Jameskin. And Jameskin wondered if it would be okay if he got upset. And I didn't know what he wanted to be upset about. Uh, no, he's not the blind guy, George H. The blind guy is the blind shake. Uh, KSM is the chubby guy that has uh, acknowledged that he's uh, guilty of everything, including sending Jesus Christ to be alongside the thief on the hill at Golgotha. And uh, since you brought it up, George H., do you have any idea what Golgotha means? Uh, there's a hill. There's a far away. That's a old rugged cross. David, are you back? Yeah, doesn't Golgotha mean the place of the skull? Yeah, were you, were you listening to me? I always listen to you. Well, now do you know how bad everybody feels because they can't get it? Okay, well, if they can't get that, uh, nobody has guessed where I was on Father's Day 2010, but it shouldn't be difficult. Just put Agent Chips plus Father's Day plus 2010 uh, plus Pastel plus IOC. In fact, while you do it, the old rugged cross, Ridge Runner, very good for you. On a hill far away, there's an old rugged cross. A symbol of something and shame. Anyway, uh, I think I'll play that. The Skull of Golgotha was mentioned by Manly Hill. Okay, David, over to you. Um, Fenway Park, by the way, is supposed to have a false flag on Father's Day, but Able Danger thinks we can uh, we can stop it if I can figure out when Father's Day is. Uh, Father's Day used to be every day for me, and then I found out that Matthew 10, 36 uh, can change science. David, over to you. Yeah, uh, so um, I'm just intrigued that uh, from a business point of view, what, and I'm sure it's not just business, uh, Donald Trump's attitude towards gays is, and it said here, yeah, friends say he also views gay rights through the lens of a bottom line minded businessman. His key concern is, are you capable and able to do the job I hired you for? And if you are, very little else matters, says Abe Wallach, an openly gay executive at the Trump Organization in the 1990s. Very little on a social level will make Donald excited. If it was money or something else, he might get excited. Now, I would say from Hillary's point of view, she looks through the lens of a bottom line radical feminist. And if you're gay and male, she's got nothing in common with you, particularly if you object or reject her approach to getting back into the White House. Because I think instinctively she understands that the ordinary gay man has got nothing in common with a radical feminist or radical lesbian. Now, she doesn't have to be a lesbian. I don't care what her sexual orientation is, but she's carved out with your sister. And remember, we go back a long way, Field. Now, remember the catalogue of... Um, what do we call them, mistress of the revels. And how many women did we have in that uh, list? Do you remember? Over to you. I don't have a clue, but it wasn't it close to 130 or so? Yeah, I think so. I think so. And we had uh, we covered a lot of ground, and it included uh, Sam Cam with the dolphin tattoo on her ankle. And just a reminder, Samantha Cameron... I think carried some very important information relating to the 911 attack by hand because it was so secretive they didn't want to entrust it to uh, the military communications network. Um, but she came out to New York the day before the 911 attack and she mingled, it would appear, with uh, Sarah Ferguson and Hillary Clinton and the radical feminist, I forget her name, who entrapped and extorted one of the Beatles. So there was a kind of Manhattan reunion of radical feminists that were aware of the impending attack and who the principal targets were. 
So who were the principal targets for these people? I'm just uh, thinking off the top of my head. I think a number of them included um, white males with a military background and a uniform. Now that kind of sounds kind of weird, perhaps. But I think one of the things that really gets these women mad is young, or not necessarily particularly young, but middle-aged, capable white men with a military background who uh, traditionally in the United States um, took a, a leading position in society. Now, these parasitical women, remember, you've got that uh, Michelle Obama. At Princeton, she wrote a long-winded thesis about how blacks couldn't get into the system. And then she became a member, correct me if I'm wrong, field of the Down Low Club in Chicago, which is basically a kind of mating game where you take really ugly women, and I'm not talking about their looks, I'm talking about their personalities that can't find a man or a normal man, <laughs> and you hitch them up with a feeble, uh, black, young, gay male. And the idea being you can basically have a combination, and I think they call them um, the beard. What, what, was the, what was the name of the male side of such a relationship? You remember that, Phil? Uh, they're a beard, too. Uh, wait a minute. I know where you're going with this, though. Uh, and it's going to take me a while because I'm busy. I'm busy Googling. Uh, I'm not Googling. I'm sending. I guess I just sent a picture to four of our better uh, or our faster posters. There's four people. One in uh, Utica, New York. One in Brighton, UK. One in Denver, Colorado. And one I've forgotten about. I think it was. I think the fourth one is uh, McDyme. But I just sent four of our fastest gunslingers two images, and one of them is an image of one of the able danger leaders with a mask on, and the other one is an image of the same. In fact, I'll ask the people that are getting the images to put up the mask image first so people can try to guess who it is that's behind the mask, and then uh, they can put up the other image second so everyone can see who the a mask party was, and they can see that we really are, David, when I talk about we, I mean the able danger. Uh, well, we have more than 10,000 agents because about three years ago, somebody put up a YouTube saying, from your 10,000 agents field. Uh, so we know that we have more than 10,000 agents. But uh, the beard, yeah, it's Cake Boy, wasn't it Cake Boy? Ah, yes, well done, Phil. Well, I, well all I have to do... If you ask me a question I don't know the answer to, if I just hem and haw around and talk for like 37 minutes, it'll come to me because it'll be the only thing I haven't talked about already. So the process of elimination. David, I have told you about the process of elimination, haven't I? Yeah, but I think you've associated that with um, mental pants. Yes, it was something that if you did not... Um, eliminate on schedule, you might have an explosive elimination when you'd least prefer to have one. For instance, if you were at the Pulse uh, LBGT and somebody said, we're all going to be shot, there might be a bunch of uh, involuntary elimination of precious bodily waste products. Over to you, David. Yeah, and you know what those uh, gay men needed? Um around to take care of business with this clown who shot him is the kind of men that Hillary Clinton hates. You know, the, the Pat Tillmans of the world. Or not even. You don't need to be a Pat Tillman and a football star. For a man, uh, a normal man, I would say, and I'm treading carefully here, when one man comes in with a gun, as this guy did. And incidentally, you know that he was an employee of G4S, which is the British company that's moving illegal immigrants around the United States for your sister, who was the senior counsel for the detention and deportation program of the Immigration and Naturalization Service in the mid-90s. She set this stuff up, Phil. I know. Why do you think I told Dunford, Trump, and Carson that if they are legitimate about wanting to save the United States of America, not the corporation, but the republic, 
the first two things they need to do is get the hook on Obama, and they've got him. I think that occurred on June 2nd. Uh, and what day is today? The 13th. So I believe 11 days ago there was a silent coup, and it needed to be silent because step two of the silent coup, after they would get a Dunford and a other party to become the uh, de facto vice president, they needed to slip somebody in as new president. Um, and am I saying that Donald Trump is a great guy? No, but uh, a year and a half ago, was I saying General Dunford was a great guy? No, but using Able Danger Techniques 37 Charlie and 66 Lima, you can take otherwise confused individuals and show them that they can either uh, take the highway or uh, or else, and the or else isn't, uh, well, recently there was a general named David Petraeus who was being followed by a camera at the builder meeting, and he knew that uh, his or, or else was coming, and he ran like a little sissy girl. Did you see that YouTube, David? I think I did. Yeah, yeah, you know, whether you're, whether you're gonna die or whether you're gonna survive, at least be man enough to face the, uh, the camera and, and speak the truth. Uh, speak the truth to power is the cliche. We don't have to speak the truth to power. Or we don't have to speak the truth to, to weakness. Just speak the truth. That's all that's required. David, over to you. Yeah, and when you talk about Bilderberg, we have to remember that two of the key founders of the Bilderberg in 1954 were associated with British intelligence. One was Lord Boothby, who is a predatory pedophile working with the Cray twins and organized crime in London. And the other was a man, I think I've got his title right, Major General uh, Colin Gubbins, the founder of the Special Operations Executive, who was working with Churchill to, quote, set Europe on fire. And setting Europe on fire re requires you to train very capable, probably very extremely dangerous uh, people to operate clandestinely, if that's the right pronunciation, behind enemy lines and pretend to be something else and have near perfect communications with people they may never meet uh, to spring up and either stand down the forces of the enemy so the enemy can't defend itself or attack the enemy principally using this man in the middle technique that in my opinion, it's a very old technique, but was refined in its modern form by uh, this guy Colin Gubbins. And what you see in Orlando yesterday, <laughs> it's a classic example. Remember, the guy apparently had been interviewed three or four times by the FBI while he was working for G4S, this corrupt security, British security system. And did you know that's the biggest security company in the world and they handled the London Olympics and screwed up big time field over to you. Yeah, I've, uh, I've got something I'm going to send. Uh, it's very significant. It just came to me. It didn't, doesn't matter who it came from. I want three uh, good, well, everyone here is good. I want three people to volunteer to post something, and the first three who volunteer to post it, I can anticipate who those three might be, I'm going to send something that just came in at 1.23. I just got it. So 15 minutes ago, uh, something very significant came in, and I want to share it with everybody in real time. So I need three volunteers to post something. And uh, once I send it to you three, I would ask that all three of you post it because this is worth a triple play. David, over to you. Did you have a question, by the way, David? No, no, no. I don't think so, Phil. Okay, no, good. So I'll go on to the second paragraph of today's post. AD claims that Circo's women-owned 8A companies, and we're thinking, of course, of Base One Technologies, which is at New Rochelle, about 20 miles up the road from Chappaqua, New York, and that was the company that installed the backdoored server into Hillary's uh, house or home in Chappaqua so that she could participate in the spot-fixing, the killing of her enemies. Anyway, I, di I digress equipped the former Secretary of State Clinton with ATF FBI Communications Network. Now, did you know, Phil, that uh, JFK tried to integrate the ATF and the FBI because they both have independent laboratories 
to develop and investigate um, explosive events, but they've been kept separate since uh, tens or decades because from the man in the middle point of view, it's much more interesting if you're going to kill someone in a false flag attack, you send in the other side of the network that wasn't involved in putting the attack together. So if the attack is put together by the ATF, such as um, the attack on the Murrah building, where they actually placed these bastards a bomb under the child care center, they sent in the FBI. Conversely, if it's an FBI attack, you send in the ATF. And we must always remind, I think it's useful to do so at least, our listeners and the American public in general, that evidence in the Murrah building bomb was flown to Washington on your sister's Department of Justice a prisoner and alien transportation system, and your sister flew members of the Bin Laden family out of the country on a contract plane rented or hired through the Department of Justice prisoner and alien transportation system. She's, she's a treason, she's a cow, but unfortunately she's got a very powerful network of people who use things like mass uh, pedophile entrapment, and the resource they use for mass pedophile entrapment is the database associated with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children in the custody of senior executive service personnel in the Department of Justice. In fact, if I could remember the name, I would, but uh, that will come back, no doubt. There is a woman there who sits on top of that archive. <clears throat> and, of course, it's a very useful archive because if you want to target someone in the Pentagon, you just download, with or without their permission, an image of child pornography, possibly a child being tortured to death, and then you blackmail them and say that they're using or abusing or selling this kind of stuff. So they're about as dirty as they can get, but we'll have their guts for garters. Okay, could you um, just slow okay. down and say we'll have their guts for what? Garters. Yes, well, good. That's uh, very British of you. Yeah, well, a garter is, did you ever know, that goes around a woman's thigh um, if she's wearing a stocking, or in certain societies it did. Yes, and it was to keep the stockings up, right? Yeah, and an elderly lady, a friend of ours, she's passed away now, I went to, with my late wife to their wedding, um, and she married, I think, at about 70 or 80. It was very amusing. And uh, during the reception afterwards, she tossed a garter into the crowd. I thought that was rather neat. Over to you. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what uh, Scrutinizer's uh, email address is, and so I'm not in the chat room. I'm looking for Scrut because I want to send him something. Um, so I'm sort of busy for about 37 seconds, David, if you could make something up. I can. Okay, All right. good. So um, AD, this is the third paragraph. AD claims that Serco provided the feminists on DOJ Pride with Zulu time yeah. signals to spot fix the murders of 50 gay men by Omar Mateen, the alleged ISIS shooter in Orlando, who was employed by the British security company G4S and whose father hated gays. Now, let's just get a flavor around it. G4S employed this clown over 10 years or nearly 10 years. Right? He's investigated or interviewed by the FBI three times. He gets a pass just before the attack. He goes and buys some ammo. Um, now, the ammo, every piece of ammo in the United States is tracked. It's got some kind of numbering or stamp or whatever, and it's obviously a fundamental part at a crime scene of tracing back the source. So one of the first people to go to, or the organization to go to, as to where this guy got the ammo, is the organization that controls the National Ammunition Center, no, the National Defense Ammunition Center, which has been dropping ammunition in Syria and Iraq for ISIS. And that is operated by the usual uh, suspects, a small group or cadre of senior executive service personnel reporting to your sister, and the employees of Serco. So this attack in Orlando was put together, period, by Serco in a conspiracy with Hillary Clinton and Christine Marcy, and the gays should be outraged. They're much better off supporting Donald Trump because he's open-minded, partly because he comes from an industry which has to be open-minded, right? Hillary Clinton, she doesn't come from an industry at all. She's always been a parasitical lawyer, and worse, she's actually focused on patent law 
including the development or brokering of the triaxial gyroscope uh, flight box uh, made by BEI Industries or developed by BEI Industries for the Boeing aircraft that were hijacked on 911. Over to you, Phil. Good. I have an announcement to make. It's uh, We have a winner of the Guinness beer bottle that's not open. I just asked several people to post a letter from Anna Von Reitz, which is very significant. I recommend people go back after the show and uh, take a look at it. In fact, I'm looking to see if two people, uh, yes, Maranath is here, and uh, the other one is Freeport Girl, and I don't think she's here. I haven't seen much of her lately. Uh, she needs to see this. Uh, this. The letter that's been posted by several people, including Bucky, Liverish, Peasant, who I've met, and Ginger Quickie, who I've not met, um, it includes in there a brief discussion of who can revoke their election to voluntarily pay income tax. And if people think I'm sounding like I'm subversive to the government, I'm not. I'm just being faithful to my oaths, count them for. Uh, wait, the other Guinness bottle was to be given away at the Plum Plunge. George H., it is going to be given away at the Plum Plunge. I just gave it away right now to someone I know that's coming to the Plum Plunge, Bucky Badger. Hey, Bucky, do you want to tell George what you think of his uh, reaction to the fact that you legitimately earned this Guinness? And, Bucky, you know that I'm willing to not only ice it down so it's cool, but if you don't like Guinness, I'm willing to drink it for you, and I'll give you a six-pack of whatever beer you might prefer. So once again, we find that people are quick to criticize, uh, but they sometimes are quicker to criticize than they are to participate. And Bucky was participating because he wasn't even one of the originals. The uh, He filled in for a scrutinizer who uh, I didn't get at the scrutinizer in time. But uh, nice recovery. Of course, that's me, the Prince of Blends. But uh, what I would do is I can't imagine Scrutinizer would show up at the plunge. But if Scrutinizer shows up the plunge, then he'll get this bottle of beer because, you know, when Bucky's in Plum City, he cannot be, uh, he cannot be wasting his time counting bottles of beer. So it's, I think this one slipped through the cracks. I'm not suggesting that Scrutinizer would come here. I'm not suggesting that someone from England who's a female from Brighton might come here, but you never know, they might. I'm going to have a delicious kiwi fruit flavored Cavendish and Harvey. Oh, yeah, it says kiwi, mango kiwi fruit drops. David, while I suck on this uh, very pulse like LBGD, like gay friendly fruit drop, would you take it away? Yeah, sure. Last paragraph of today's post. United States Marine Field McConnell invites James Comey, FBI director and former director of Serco's drug hub banker, that is to say the most important banker for the heroin, um, the opium trade, since 1865, right through to this day, who paid a $1.9 billion fine into the United States Department of Justice Asset Forfeiture Fund, created by Field's sister and Eric Holder in 1984, which allowed these vermin to go forward with a great deal of funds stolen or confiscated from, uh, how shall I put it, uh, the free enterprise community, for which I would include organized crime, and basically fund the 911 attack and ensure the silence of the lambs or the males in these various government departments with an entrapment and a blackmail racket involving images of child pornography too terrible to describe. So these women can't sink any lower, but just back to this uh, concluding paragraph. United States Marine Field McConnell invites James Comey, FBI director and former director of Serco's drug hub banker, HSBC, to investigate Clinton's DOJ pride feminists, and the UK security companies, and I'm being specific to referring to Serco and G4S and a company called Aegis, which is a company run by Nicola Soames, the UK security companies engaged in man-in-the-middle attacks on the United States and its allies. And sooner or later, the United States government is going to have to send a sweet little message to the United Kingdom government 
you'd better hand over the directors of G4S and uh, Circo and bring them to the United States to be tried for a racketeering conspiracy to operate, amongst others, long-range murder for hire, including the 50 gay men who died in Orlando last uh, yesterday. Over to you, Phil. I'm busy writing something. In fact, what I'm writing is Agent 66. Uh, stand by for a private email. So I'm going to be sending Agent 66 a private email. And so Agent 66, until you get it, uh, please don't post anything um, if you don't mind. And, and uh, oh, I put AGG66. You know what I mean, AGENT66. So, David, what was your point uh, about G4S? I think I agree with you. I think the United States government should uh, send a sweet little note. It doesn't have to be that sweet to the United Kingdom government uh, that they need to hand over or extradite the directors of G4S and Serco for a trial at a place chosen by Field McConnell uh, to face charges of racketeering influence corrupt organization in the United States, which has resulted in the wrongful death of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people around the world. But a good place to start from its symbolic value is the murder of 50 uh, gay men in an Orlando club uh, yesterday, where the individual concerned is an employee, or was an employee, he's now dead, of G4S, and has been for t 10 years. And G4S knew or ought to have known that this guy was a suitable candidate to go and whack some gay men on behalf of his handlers. And the absolutely most important thing is, who are his handlers? And my assessment is his handlers, maybe one or two uh, layers removed, are your sister, Christine Marcy, and Hillary Clinton. And I don't like Donald Trump uh, either field, but uh, I don't get to vote. Um, but I do think the lesbian, gay, and bisexual and transgendered communities' interests are much better served by a guy who's been in the hotel industry for decades and has absolutely no um, inhibitions about employing uh, these kind of people and giving them the greatest respect because they would be very good at their jobs. Over to you, Phil. Yeah, okay, well, why don't you be good at your job and send me three short paragraphs of why uh, Circo and G4S people should be extradited to the United States to be uh, interviewed by the FBI and by the Trump campaign and the Bernie Sanders campaign. Notice I left out Hillary. And if you give me three paragraphs of why that makes sense, I'll be glad to send it to the FBI and also to Russia. And I can uh, also put out an affidavit to that effect, which I think adds a little bit of power because an affidavit given, say, 30 days or 60 days, and it's my understanding that you can specify in the affidavit when it has to be replied to, but, uh, I would think that we could do something sort of out of the box by saying you need to reply to this affidavit within 30 days unless another false flag that smacks of Circo and G4S occurs, in which case uh, the offer is withdrawn. What do you think, David? Yeah, I think it's excellent. I, I, I'm going to make that the next post for you. No. Okay. Uh, I've got to go send an email to Agent 66, so I'll be away for a minute, David. But I'll be right here, so you just go ahead and wrap. It's 12, it's 12 o'clock, Phil, so um, i got a number of things to do, if that's all right. Oh, okay, well, go ahead. You want to kick yourself off, or you want me to kick you off, or do you want to say goodbye first? Uh, goodbye to everyone. Um, I think this is a huge up. Uh. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm supposed to send an email to Agent 66. So let me do that, and then I'll see if there's anything I need to talk about. Um, would you guys talk amongst yourselves? Which reminds me, how come nobody put up the picture? I sent pictures to several people, and nobody posted the pictures yet. I feel terrible. Okay, that does it. I'll send the pictures to, uh, uh, to Agent 66, and maybe Agent 66 will post the pictures for me. Hmm. Okay. I've got to go to email. I'm talking, and David's gone. We'll be done here shortly. Okay, here's the email. And then uh, sent. I'm going to send. 
these images. Hopefully, the images will come through. And remember, if the images happen to pop up while I'm not there, I'm talking about there's an image taken recently. And uh, let's see, image race. Yes, image race. And so far, nobody's gotten it. Sent from my iPhone, okay, to uh, Derek Douglas, Fix It Fast and Afterburner. Now this is going to uh, Agent 66. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. Yes, okay, uh, you're going to get this, uh, Jill, excuse me, Agent 66, and then there's a very short message. Sorry. Um, okay, there goes an email. Once again, um, Afterburner and Brighton, Oh, wait a minute, that didn't go anywhere. There, now it's gone. Okay, it says the message has been sent. Uh, Afterburner in Brighton and uh, Derek and Fix It Fast and Doug McDime, I was sent you guys an image and uh, I wonder if anybody posted it yet. It looks like they have not. So I'll catch up with the chat room. And then, uh, Doug, yeah, I'm strange, but simple things are made difficult. Yep. Mm -hmm. Seems like all those Milwaukee beer families were intermarried with each other. Schlitz, Blatz. Notice Mensa can't spell beer. He said beef. Um, picture I posted was shown above. Okay, which picture... I didn't send a picture. This is great. I like looking at the chat room. Uh, I'm going to get going because I'm sort of busy too, but uh, before I go, uh, I guess I'm going to have to go send this. I'm going to resend the pictures. Uh, you guys can watch me. I'm going to go to my email. Then I'm going to go to... Uh, Sent. Then I'm going to go. Oh. I guess that's me. Let's just see if somebody has posted the. Okay, nobody's posted it yet. Glossary is where it's at. Oh, am I glad somebody said glossary? This doesn't make any sense. Uh, first of all, chapter 13 of book 2 was completed about uh, three hours ago and so book two will be published and in this office uh, by late next week uh, maybe by Thursday for the Thursday radio show secondly there is a listener out there somewhere whose first name starts with P P as in Pamela and whose second name starts with N aha Jameskin very good Jameskin not only posted the picture but he um, Posted the correct picture, which is a masked agent at some location known only to able danger agents. Only an able danger agent would recognize where that picture was taken, and only an able danger agent or an FBI guy who pursues. Well, James can now just took my mask off. Um, anyway, does anybody have any idea where that picture was taken? And now I don't have to send the message out because uh, James can post it. This picture was taken Saturday night. That's uh, less than 48 hours ago. And I was at a location. Field, I was trying to post the 1940 stud, but I made a mess. Oh, okay. Well, that's not it anyway. Uh, and I did send you a brief message, uh, 66, if you could read that and not share it with anybody. Thank you very much. Um, Look, a robber at Vino in the Valley. Oh, good. George got it. Uh, it's not a robber. It's an unknown subversive. Uh, I was minding my own business at Vino in the Valley on Saturday night at about 7 p.m. when uh, somebody got my picture next to a spotted cow beer bottle. So, uh, spotted cow beer bottle. Let's see how long it takes anybody to put up an image of a spotted 
cow beer bottle. Oh, I see. Uh, Duke McTurk has a good excuse. He's uh, he's driving. So yes, you're right. Don't be playing with phones when you're driving, especially if you have a preschool kid in the car with you. Vino in the Valley, absolutely. Tried and tried, but failed and failed. That's okay. Uh, could be worse, Doug. You could be David Hawkins. Uh, great pitch. That's well, I don't know if she's talking about probably the one with the mask. That I look much better in that. When you take the mask off, we're back to looking like I really look. Okay, enough about that. I think we can wrap this up. Um, the book number two will be published next week. It's going, um, it'll be, I think it'll be in its final, the book is all done. I'm done with it. Um, it needs to be reviewed by Craig Peterson, who makes sure the formatting is all correct. If anyone thinks back to Thursday, I ask for anyone that wished to get their name in the book next to a comment about why I write these things to uh, do so, and nobody responded to that, as in none, zero. So it's no big deal. We'll just put, there's the big red button. We're going to put the same, uh, the same comments 